Hey guys, I'm Dave Chesson of Kindlepreneur and today I'm gonna to be talking about a question I get a lot, which is how do I make my YouTube videos? Now when it comes to YouTube videos, there are really two important things for me. The first is having good enough quality and second, being able to quickly and effectively do it. Now what I mean by this is, well, let's face it, if your videos look really bad, are you really going to feel good about making them? <laughs> Probably not. The other thing though too, is that if it takes you forever to set them up, you're never gonna get around to it. Back in the day, I used to have to set up my tripod, then take the camera and put it on, then set up all the lights, and then get myself positioned, and set up the microphone, and then finally get into shooting. However, if I really wanted to create good videos, I needed to be able to not only get good quality, but be able to set it up in less than five seconds, or at least that was my goal. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly what equipment you need to do that, as well as how to set it up so you can quickly and efficiently make great videos. In the description below though, I'm gonna have a link where you can find all of the specific equipment and you can check that out there. Do understand I use affiliate links just because, well, the little extra money I get from that is pretty cool and it goes towards my coffee fund. So be sure to check that out and use those links if you want to give me a nice little thumbs up on it. Now with that, let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, to start, let's talk about the equipment needed in order to get a good enough professional looking video like you see here. And that starts with four pieces of equipment, camera, lens, microphone, and lighting. Let's go ahead and check those out. The first is the camera. I personally use the Canon 5D Mark III. However, I don't really think there's much of a difference in them and the camera isn't as important as the lenses. I chose this one because I found out that the TV show House filmed one of their season finales using it. So that was pretty cool. Also, the Canon DSLRs come with a software that will allow you to control your camera from your computer, which is really important for later. So I like this one, but I'll only recommend that you get at least a DSLR and probably check out the Canons just for that software capability. Next is the lens. And like I said, the lens is actually more important than the camera itself. And let me tell you, I went through a lot of lenses before I finally found this one the Sigma 30 millimeter. It's what makes me look clear while also making the background a little blurry. <laughs> There's not much of a fisheye and the control is great. Next is the lighting. Lighting is so important. Don't believe me? Let's go ahead and check out what it looks like without it. I'm just gonna turn on normal lighting. Ah, right? I mean, yeesh, okay. Let's go back to the professional lighting. Do you see the difference? You could have a great camera and lens and if you don't have the right lighting, you're just gonna look yellowy or not so cool. Now to do this, I use the Diva ring light. It's got an adjustable LED capability, which gives me full control of the look and I don't need four other lights like some of the other YouTubers do. It's good enough and easy enough for me. So this is definitely one of my favorite parts. And finally, the microphone. Now when I first started, I started with the Audio-Technica ATR2100. Super awesome microphone, especially for its price. It's not only is that, but it also connects directly into your computer through the USB. I still use this microphone for, for podcast recording and everyday use. However, about a year ago, I wanted to up my game in audio and went with the Rode NTG3B. This is an amazing shotgun mic. Two things, one, it's expensive, and two, it's also best used with a Zoom H4n or another audio recorder. Um, that way you can pull the sound directly into it and believe me, a much better situation. However, the H4n is not cheap either. So this is a pretty expensive option and I'd only recommend that if you really wanna step up your game. Otherwise, the ATR2100 is totally good enough. Okay, so now that we looked at the equipment that gives me the quality of picture and sound that you see here, let's go ahead and talk about my desk setup that allows me to start shooting in less than five seconds, because let's face it, if it took longer, I probably wouldn't do it as much as I do. So in order to do this, I need to be able to have my camera and my lighting be able to be permanently a part of my desk that way I can click, turn on, and start shooting and use my desk to control this. So how do I do that? Let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's start with the desk. I got the Apex Desk Elite Adjustable Standing Desk. I needed a desk that would move up and down so I could control the height of my camera and was sturdy enough to handle all the weight and equipment I was going to put on it. 
This was by far the best choice and is held up for four plus years. I really love this desk. Next is the video monitor mount. Now for this, I got the Vivo triple mount. This part is super important because of two things. The first is the mount can connect to the desk, which isn't always the case for some of them. And two, because the main monitor bar is hollow with an opening at the top. This will become extremely important for the setup as you'll see. By the way, I personally love that there are three different monitors. It's just the way I like to write. However, though, if that's a problem for you or you don't like having three, you can actually take two of the arms off and just go with one. For the price, it's really not a bad stand even if you're just using one. But if you want three, <laughs> I like it a lot. Okay, so now that you have the desk and the monitor mount, let's go ahead and talk about how you're going to stick the camera and the light permanently a part of your desk. To do this, you're gonna need a pack of two Amazon light stands. These were originally for mounting lights on them and their connectors at the top are really important because they connect to everything we'll be using. However, instead of setting these up, you're instead going to hack them up. Yeah, I said that. First, measure how high you want your light and camera to set up. Mark this from the top of your desk's top to where the connector will meet. Then take a hacksaw and cut them both. Once you've done that, you can fit both pieces in the hole very snugly. Once you've done that, take the back one and bend it back like so. This is because without that room, you can't handle the two connects. They'll actually just clash and it's, it's a problem. Okay, once you've done that, you can fit your Diva light on the front pole or the first pole. For the second pole, you'll fit the bendable neck from Stellar. This particular bendable neck is strong enough to hold your camera and lens. So don't worry and believe me, trust me when I say get that one. I went through way too many that would fold under the weight. Next, you'll need to add a ball joint to not only connect your camera to the bendable neck, but to allow you to move or angle the camera. This is really important because for something as heavy as a DSLR lens, you'll need something strong. Luckily, the Joby Gorillapod ball head does the trick. Okay, so now that you have your lighting and your camera directly connected to your desk, let's talk about how you connect it to your computer. If you can, through HDMI to HDMI is best. Now, if you have a Canon, just by connecting them together and turning on the camera, this should automatically bring up the EOS utility software. If it doesn't or you don't have it, just Google the free software and you should find it. Next, click remote shooting and then click live view shoot. As you can see, I'm on the screen. I can control this by double clicking here so as to make it auto focus on my face. Now it's figuring out, wait, okay, where is he? Moving over. All right, go back and recenter it. And then when you're ready to start recording, just go ahead and click this little red, little red button on the left here. And then finally, click it when you're done recording. So there you have it. That's the equipment that allows me to make professional or semi-professional looking videos, you be the judge, as well as making it easy for me to produce quickly and on my own. Now there are some other components that I like to use with my whole desktop. The first is I bought a Canon power adapter that directly powers my Canon from an electrical socket. That way I don't have to worry about battery. Also, to use my DSLR setup for live streaming or direct feeds into Zoom or Skype, I use the Blackmagic Web Presenter. However, they're no longer making it and instead the Elgato Camlink 4K does the trick. Just plug that HDMI cord from your camera into it and then it into your computer. Luckily for you guys, the Elgato is like one fourth the price, so yay to that. Finally, I really like setting the mood right, especially when I'm writing, so I do a lot with lighting. So I bought some cheap uh, LED strip lights and taped them to the back of my monitors and to the back of the bookcase you see behind me so as to give that really cool glow. Okay, so that about covers it. You now know all the equipment I use to make these videos and exactly how I set it up so that I can do it myself and really quickly. And again, if you like to see all of those components, go ahead and click the link below at the DaveChesson.com website and there you can find the list. And again, I use affiliate links there, but every little penny that comes towards that does not affect you, but does go towards my coffee fund. All right, with that, I'm Dave Chesson of Kindlepreneur signing off. Cheers.